A4 VSO LR2D has power control plus pressure control. The power control varies the pump displacement, dependent on output pressure in such a manner that a specified drive power at constant speed cannot be exceeded. And the pressure control limits the maximum pressure at the pump outlet. The output pressure enters the control blocks and the small chamber of piston servo through this passage. The pressure in the piston servo chamber holds the balancer which is connected to the piston servo in the max displacement angle. This pressure also enters the power control valve and the cutoff valve. The power control valve is a three-way, two-position valve. The first way is connected to the output pressure. The second way is connected to the tank. And the third way passes through the cutoff valve. to the larger side of the piston servo. The spring force pushes the power control spool and connects the large side of piston servo to the tank pressure. There is a passage inside the piston servo. that connects the output pressure to a small piston. The output pressure can act on the piston area and push it upward. This piston is connected to a rocker arm. The rocker arm is fixed by this pin. It can rotate, just a few degrees around it. The arm is connected to the power control spool by a pin. So the rocker arm can push the spool against the spring force and connects the large side of piston servo to the output pressure. Now, let's look at the function of power control. The pump displacement is 100%, and the output pressure is low. The output pressure increases. This pressure acts on the small piston and produces FP force. On the other head of the lever, there is force of spring. When the moment FBL1 becomes larger than the moment FSL2, the lever rotates and pushes the power control spool against the spring and connects the large side of piston servo to the output pressure. The force acting on large side of piston servo is higher than the small side. So the piston servo moves to the left and reduces the pump displacement. As the pump displacement decreases, L1 length decreases too. So the FSL2 moment overcomes FPL1 moment. 
and the spring pushes the power control spool. The pressure at the large side of piston servo drops to a amount that holds the piston servo at a balanced position. Let's increase the output pressure again. If the output pressure decreases, FSL2 moment overcomes FPL1 moment. And the spring force pushes the power control spool and connects the large side of piston servo to the tank. Because of the differential pressure between both sides of piston servo, it moves to the left and increases the displacement until FPL1 overcomes FSL2. Now, let's look at the pressure control function. The output pressure enters the cutoff valve. It acts on the head of the cutoff spool and produces FP force. The other head of the spool is connected to a pair of springs. These springs push the spool against the FP force. The spring chamber is connected to the tank pressure. As the output pressure increases, the FB force increases too. When the FB force overcomes the spring's force, cutoff spool moves and connects the large side of piston servo to the output pressure. This also disconnects the power control passage to the large side of piston servo. The displacement of the pump reduces to the amount that prevents the pressure from rising further. If the output pressure drops, the spring force overcomes FP force and pushes the cutoff spool and connects the large side of piston servo to the third way of power control valve again.